This is KGW News at Noon. And we start this noon with a shooting in Clackamas County where deputies found two bodies inside a car. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. Take a look at this. This is where this happened. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office saying they found the car after it hit a fire hydrant on Southeast 122nd near Ford Street. When they looked inside, they found two dead bodies and the car was riddled with bullet holes. The Sheriff's Office is calling this a homicide and they are working with Portland Police to figure out if this is connected to any other shootings. If you have any other information about this crime, you're asked to call the sheriff's tip line. The phone number there on your screen, 503-723-4949. Now to a deadly shooting in Northeast Portland. Officers were at the state's motel on 82nd and Russell all night long. That's right across from McDaniel High School and just down the road from Glen Haven Park. Officers say they found a man with gunshot wounds in the motel parking lot right around 9 o'clock last night. He died from his injuries and hasn't been publicly identified. Police say they haven't made any arrests, but they did detain a man as part of their investigation. Another report of shots fired in Portland closed part of Southeast Stark this morning. Here's the area we're talking about. Police arrived at 99th and Stark around 1.30 this morning and found evidence of a shooting. They don't have anyone in custody though. No one was hurt. Today, fans are reacting after the owner of the Portland Thorns stepped down as CEO of the team. As we told you yesterday at noon, Merritt Paulson apologized to the players and the city of Portland for a scandal that's rocking the National Women's Soccer League. An international law firm identified the Thorns as one of the organizations that fostered a culture of sexual and emotional abuse. We spoke to a couple of people about what's going on, starting with a fan who said she wants Paulson to sell the team. So we do know that it's probably going to take a little bit, um, but we do hope that, you know, those steps are being made to finally sell. I think if they remove him as owner, it would be a token move. And I think the better thing is to get him out of the operations of this team. And if people want to take a deeper look at the ownership structure of the Timbers and the Thorns, great. But saying simply that he must sell the team, what does that mean? They create a new LLC and, you know, somebody else is in charge of it. That sports columnist and radio host John Canzano with his take on the controversy. In the meantime, Paulson says the Thorns will conduct a worldwide search for a new CEO and the players will get to meet with the finalists. Here are some of the other local headlines we're tracking this noon. The former mayor of Beaverton has pleaded guilty to one count of possession of child pornography. Denny Doyle, who's 74 years old, was mayor for 11 years. He will be sentenced coming up in January and must register as a sex offender. Tonight, you can weigh in on how Portland police handled the protests back in 2020. The Committee for Community Engaged Policing is hosting a virtual town hall from 6 to 8.30. The public feedback will be used to make recommendations for things like police training. And Intel is planning to lay off thousands of workers because of declining sales. That's according to a Bloomberg report. Intel has 114,000 employees, about a fifth of them here in Oregon. Intel could officially announce those layoffs by the end of the month. Well, today marks 60 years since the Columbus Day storm. Portland saw wind gusts as strong as a Category 3 hurricane. What you're looking at there is from our KGW archives at the time. Almost 50 people died. The destruction stretched from San Francisco to Seattle. Had the perfect conditions, everything came together. Doesn't happen like that all very often, but in this case it definitely did, and it was a rather memorable storm. Coming up on our evening newscast, KGW, KGW's Joe Ranieri is reporting on this historic storm and why there wasn't much time for people to prepare. Now to Clark County and the wildfire that's burning near Camas. Residents in the area sent us these photos, and now we're hearing from officials who say the Nakia Creek fire was human-caused because there was no lightning in the area Sunday when this fire started. 
This noon, it's now down to 156 acres in size from 250, and it's 10% contained. The map here shows the areas under evacuation levels. That's one and two. Be ready and be set to go. Well, here in the metro area, we're talking about air quality issues again because of the yeah. smoke. Rod, what's the latest? Yeah, or maybe more of a air quality concerns really haven't had issues the last couple of days, but we're keeping an eye on things. We are still under an air quality alert or warning for the Portland metro area, Camby, Hillsboro, Troutdale, and this is posted simply because we're looking at wind patterns transporting the smoke from that fire that Brenda just told you about. So right now we're good. We've been good the last couple of days. All the green dots in our area, that's good air quality. Unhealthy down in Lane County, that's a separate issue. That's that Cedar Creek smoke plume that's been down there since August. We do have some deteriorating air quality, though, up not in our area, but up in parts of central and eastern Washington that we're keeping an eye on as well. Okay, here's what weather models say that smoke plume from the fire in Clark County is going to be doing. 6.30 this evening. There you see the bright colors. That's the main fire. You can see a, the light blue colors, just barely noticeable hazy skies from that smoke. Really shouldn't be... Uh, a concern tomorrow. It's a little more impressive. Here we are at 1 15 in the afternoon on Thursday. The darker blue colors uh, really covering a good chunk of Clark County all the way through battleground and maybe some noticeable thicker haze in downtown Portland. So again, we'll be keeping you updated on air quality numbers should they start to fall apart right now. It's pretty much just a blue sky. Very slight haze 67 degrees. That's actually warmer than today's normal high. Today's normal high is only 66, and yet we will be up around 80. The record today is 78, and I think that record could fall, Brenda. We will get back uh, into some interesting factoids from the Columbus State storm coming up in oh. just a few minutes. Well. Okay, we'll see you then. Thank you, Rod.